Soon workmen came to give the twins their numbers. Donald was nine and Douglas ten. When the men went away, they were left alone in the shed. You may have noticed, Dougie, that yon painters forgot something. What did they forget? They painted broad new numbers on our tenders, but they put none on us. Donald winked broadly at his twin. You mean, grinned Douglas, that we can... Just that, chuckled Donald. Who'd you wished? Here's the inspector. No nine and ten, smiled the inspector. Here's Duck. He'll show you round before you start work. The twins enjoyed themselves and were soon friends with Duck. They didn't mind what they did. They tackled goods trains and coaches easily. For once the twins had shunted them, trucks knew better than to try any tricks. It's fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck. But take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Get a fuss yourself, chuckled Douglas. We'll soon settle them. Donald and Douglas had deep-toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, sniggered Henry. Tugboat Annie, laughed Gordon. Ha, ha, ha. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up, one on each side. You wouldn't have been making fun of us, would you now? Asked Donald. Gordon and Henry jumped. They glanced nervously from side to side. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, 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 certainly not, said Henry. That's fine, said Douglas. No, just mind the both of you and keep it that way. That was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, Gordon steamed into the big station with the express. At the end of the train was a special coach for passengers travelling to places on Thomas's branch line. When the coaches are taken away, engines have to remember to shunt the special coach into the bay platform. It doesn't wait there long, for Thomas, with Annie and Clarabel, comes running from the junction to collect it. Thomas is very proud of his special coach. One afternoon, Douglas was looking after the yard while Duck was away. Gordon arrived with the express. Coaches, please! On my way. He was enjoying himself when an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. Oh, I couldn't abide going back. Not with what's happening over there. Douglas worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. Huh? What's all this? Where's my coach? Coach? What coach? My special coach. The one that Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. Can't talk. <gasps> Lost sakes, Donny. I must have stowed away the special coach with the empties. Maybe I can... Too late, Dougie. Do you see that? The twins looked in horror as a mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. They're complaining to the Fat Controller. No doubt he'll be coming here next. Oh no! The Fat Controller will send me away if he finds out it was my doing. What are we going to do? Hold your wish, Doogie. Listen, I have an idea. Now do as I say. We'll change tenders. Then a war with ye, Donald, and take yon goods. Do not flash about us. Quick now, do as I say. The Fat Controller walked towards them. Douglas, with Donald's tender, waited with an innocent expression. Ah, number nine. 
And why have you not taken the goods? Uh, my tender is away, sir. So Doogie took it. See? I see. Some defect, I presume? Now tell me, why did number ten leave so quickly? Uh, maybe, sir. He saw you coming and thought he was late. Uh -huh. Let me get this straight. Number ten was shunting the yard. The coach disappeared. We investigate, and you tell me that number ten disappears too. All the while, your tender has been disconnected. These are the facts, correct? Uh, aye, sir. Good. So, Douglas, <gasps> would you mind telling me why you're masquerading with Donald's tender then? Needless to say, the Fat Controller couldn't be fooled. After that, Donald and Douglas agreed it best not to play any more tricks. For the Fat Controller was now keeping an even closer eye on them. So, you're not meant to be here? Aye, I, I stowed away here with my brother. I can't abide going back to the mainland. Why not? You haven't heard? Yon diesels are taking over. Controllers are cruel. When an engine's turn is up, they don't repair them. They put them on a cold, damp siding and then cut them up. Oh, dear. We've got to make a good impression with the fat controller, or it's the same fate for Dougie. What a shame. I wish there was something I could do. Aye, that's mighty kind, Percy. But what? 